Hello everyone, I am Simone and welcome to my channel. In this video I will talk a little about Dravidians. Very often India is represented by a simple and generic stereotype version, which is Bollywood. In my opinion, Bollywood shows one important aspect of the country and has the big merit of promoting it abroad. However, it shows only one side of it. As a result, India has often been represented as a homogeneous entity, especially in the West. This is totally wrong. One example of that is hearing from people abroad the terrible questions Do you speak Indian? Or even worse, do you speak Hindu? Even inside India, while interacting with people from other parts of the country, one could see how little the average knowledge about the southern states is. For that reason, in this video I will talk generally about Dravidians, who they are, their origin, their main groups, their geographical distribution in the subcontinent, and historical key points. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Who are the Dravidians? It is commonly accepted that the term Dravidian refers to the ethno-linguistic groups that natively speak any of the languages part of the Dravidian family. The Dravidian language family consists of about 80 languages and dialects. They are currently spoken by more than 250 million people. The origin of the term Dravidian has not been fully clarified. It is certainly of Sanskrit origin, and it is probably a corruption of the term Tamil, the oldest of the Dravidian languages. It has been suggested that the term Dravidian would indicate Tamil and all the other languages related to it, in opposition to the Indo-Aryan languages and populations from the north. Dravidians are mostly present in South India, however, as we will see later in this video, there are historical Dravidian minorities in other parts of South Asia as far as Afghanistan, Malaysia and Singapore. In fact, Dravidians are divided into three main groups, based on their geographical location in South Asia, North Dravidians, Central Dravidians and South Dravidians. Of these three groups, the largest and most famous is the Southern one, that includes ethnic groups like Karnatikas, Telugus, Malayalis and Tamils, living respectively in the southern Indian states of Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Kerala, Tamil Nadu. Kannada, Malayalam, Tamil and Telugu have centuries-old literary traditions. Among these, Tamil is the oldest. Along with Sanskrit, Tamil is one of the world's classical languages. However, unlike Sanskrit, there is a continuity of almost 2,000 years between its classical and modern forms, documented in many inscriptions, poems, and secular and religious texts and songs. Nowadays, the prominence of Telugu, Kannada, Tamil, and Malayalam languages in the Dravidian group continues to grow, thanks to a thriving film and music industry worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Recently, some actors or even movies from the Dravidian industry have made their appearance in Hollywood and in the Western cultural scene. However, apart from these four main linguistic groups, the actual number of Dravidian communities in the subcontinent is much higher. As said, they are divided based on their geographical distribution. In the Northern group, we have the Brahuis in Afghanistan and Pakistan, the Kuruks and the Mato community in India, Bangladesh and Nepal. Their total number is approximately 6 million people. In the central group, the main communities are the Chenchus, Gondis and Khonds. They constitute about 4 million people. The southern group, by far the most famous and populous, includes Badagas, Irulas, Giravarus in the Maldives, Karnatikas, Kodavas, Kurumbas, Malayalis, Panias, Tamilians, Telugus, Todas, Tuluvas. They are approximately 250 million. As we've seen, the situation is all but homogeneous. It looks more like a linguistic puzzle. That is a result of millennia of migrations, wars, invasions and forced or spontaneous integrations with the other human groups that came to populate the Indian subcontinent in the past. These include the Iranians and the Aryans. Recent DNA studies have confirmed that the most plausible theory about the origin of Dravidians is that they originated from a mix that happened between 5,000 and 4,000 years ago because of the encounter between the Iranian farming communities coming from the north and the Aborigine Indians. The Aboriginal inhabitants of India, genetically labelled 
as ancient ancestral South Indians were the direct descendants of the first human populations that reached South Asia. This was during the big migration waves from Africa that occurred approximately 50,000 years ago that spread the human species all over the world. Around 5,000 years ago, the Iranian farmer groups started to move southwards. On their migration path, they encountered the Aboriginal Indians communities. From these encounters, there originated many mixes, which resulted in the establishment of new communities throughout the subcontinent. A comparative study of the Dravidian loan words in the Indo-Aryan languages spoken in Sindh, Pakistan, Gujarat and Maharashtra as well as the toponyms of these states, has shown the evidence of a former Dravidian-speaking presence in the western part of the Indian subcontinent. This seems to confirm the theory that the roots of the Dravidian people lie in the integration between the local Aboriginal Indians and the Iranian people in their descent from the northwest of the Indian Peninsula to the south, passing through the west coast. This genetic, cultural and linguistic mixer created approximately 4,000 years ago, is what the scientists define as ancestral South Indians. Hence, somewhere in this integration process, the Dravidian peoples and language family were created. Historically, Dravidian civilizations, especially the southern ones, contributed greatly to the formation of what is today known as the multiform and complex Indian identity. Several Dravidian empires helped to spread culture, religion and Indian civilization all over South and Southeast Asia through a progressive Indianization and Hinduization process. As I will cover in a later video focused on Tamil people, we can see how, till the beginning of the second millennium of the current era, the cultural reference point in Southeast Asia was Indian. From the 3rd to the 9th century current era, the Tamil Pallava dynasty, thanks to its dominance of the trade routes, spread Tamil culture in the Malaysian peninsula and the Indonesian islands of Sumatra and Java. They were then outclassed by the rise of the powerful South Indian kingdom of the Cholas in the 11th century. The trade and military dominance of ancient and medieval Dravidian kingdoms played an important role in forging the culture of the entire South Asian and Southeast Asian regions. For example, a huge number of South and Southeast Asian languages such as Sinhala, Thai, Khmer, Burmese and Javanese have been heavily influenced by Tamil. All the writing systems for these languages have the same origin, the Tamil language, in its ancient Granta and Pallava forms. The deep Indian and Hindu influence over the local identities in Southeast Asia is still evident today. Its most remarkable example is the Cambodian site of Angkor Wat which is the largest Hindu temple as well as the largest religious site in the world. From the 12th century onwards, a progressive and unstoppable penetration of Islamic ideas and identities in both the subcontinent and Southeast Asia resulted in a generalized weakness of Dravidian and Hindu influence outside South India and a progressive switch to Islam as the main reference point in the whole Southeast Asia. It led to a progressive diminution and reduction of Indianness in the area and resulted in the formation of isolated Indianized and Hinduized pockets. One notable example is the Indonesian Empire of Majapahit, located in the Indonesian island of Java. After its fall to Muslim forces, the island of Bali became the refuge for local Hindus fleeing from Java. Thus, transferring the Hindu culture from Java to Bali, where a new kingdom was formed. Later in history, during the 14th century, the rise of the powerful Hindu Dravidian Empire of Vijayanagar in the Deccan, corresponding to the modern days Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh, managed to take control of the whole South India. This event prevented the Turkic dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate from effectively embedding militarily and culturally into the southern states. Although the Vijayanagar Empire was unable to match the greatness of the ancient Tamil empires and expand its influence beyond the geographical borders of India, it had the merit of protecting the Dravidian cultural unity in South India until the half of the 17th century. After the collapse of this great Dravidian empire, several states declared independence from it, and this went on to have a significant impact on the history of South India in the coming centuries. Among these, the most famous was the Kingdom of Mysore. Formerly a vassal of the Vijayanagar Empire, the Kingdom of Mysore became independent toward the end of the 16th century. It was a proud state that rapidly expanded under the command of wise leaders. 
One of them, Tipu Sultan, represented the pain in the neck to the British Empire, and it took them four wars to finally achieve victory in 1799. The last Dravidian independent state in India was the Nizamat of Hyderabad. It lasted about two centuries, from the 1724 to 1948, and was the center of an advanced and sophisticated culture. Its last ruler, the Nizam Mir Osman Ali Khan, was labeled by Time magazine in 1937 as the richest man in the world of his time. It was the last independent princely state to be annexed to India in 1948, after a quick military operation by the newly formed Indian Republic, called Operation Polo. Okay, people, that's all for the day. Please let me know your impressions and opinions. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Finally, I would like to leave you with a question. Which is, according to you, the best Dravidian cuisine? Leave your reply in the comment section and we can discuss further.